So good evening, everyone, and welcome to Employability Training Program, Campus to Corporate, organized by Association of Muslim Professionals. So uh, about the session, we'll uh, start the session with a short Kirat. And after the Kirat, I would request uh, the Head of Employment Assistance Cell of Association of Muslim Professionals, Mr. Iftetar Birkasa, to kindly host this session. I uh, also just want to uh, let everyone who is attending this session to let you all know that we will be raising uh, polls in between the sessions. So we would request your active participation in those polls, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُّ لِيَتِيمٍ وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَى تُعَامِ الْمِسْكِينِ وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُسَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاهُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Thank you so much. So I request uh, Iftikar Bidikar sir to please host this session. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, um, my name is Iftikar uh, Bidikar. I, I head this employment assistance cell of AMP. And we are here today to learn about various, uh, we can say, ways and tricks to how successfully you can uh, get past the interview and get the jobs. So I'll just brief you about what AMP exactly does. So can you take me to the next slide? So AMP was founded in the year 2007 and, and uh, uh, we initiated a lot of uh, initiative. Uh, education and employment are the two main segment where AMP works. So today we are we'll talking about the employment section, which is the employment as this kind of uh, AMP. What they exactly do? They do job fairs, uh, job fairs, job drives, where we help candidates in getting the job. We create a platform of uh, uh, where we invite HRs from different companies and HR consultancies, and we also invite the candidates so that uh, so that uh, they meet on the single platform, and those who are capable can get the jobs. So on God, we have a lot of reach. We have we are presence across 100 plus cities in India, and not only in India, I can say we have been presence uh, virtually also. Plus, we are presence across the world, and we have been. EMP is is a registered non-profit in UK and uh, USA and Australia now, and Alhamdulillah, we are presence across Middle East and uh, and few uh, Southeast Asian countries also. Next slide. Can you take uh, uh, next slide? Next. Okay. So uh, take me directly to ETP. We'll be talking about ETP only. Okay. So employment uh, training program or ETP, which we call, is actually uh, we help uh, job seekers to find the right job at the right place at the right time and to become the right fit in the present day modern organization. And our ETP trainers are, are seasoned professionals with in-depth knowledge about how, how the understanding of the employability training, how to use your time, how to use your resources and knowledge in the grooming and all. So we mentor uh, and help for candidates so that they can prepare themselves to face the interviews. Next. And then now, due to the, uh, these are a few of the uh, images where we conducted physical uh, ATP till last year. But as then, due to pandemic, uh, we cannot be uh, uh, physically present, but virtually we, uh, I guess, helped us to do a lot of, lot many activities now. And this is the second session of ATP which we are doing now. So I request uh, Shahzad to please uh, introduce our speaker for today and start the session. Thank you very much and Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Mr. Hashim Malik is the speaker for today's session. 
he is based out of uk uh, since last 16 years he is an automotive professional and he is a certified black belt and he is working in a german uh, company as a quality head i would now request uh, mr hashim malik to please uh, take over from here hello everyone again uh, it's hashim ali malik uh, in this session i will just take you through an approach to an interview you know i'll just have jotted down few points uh, from my own experience uh, from my own interview sessions which i went through in my professional career and also as part of my role i have to take interviews of uh, candidates and i've learned a lot i would say from the candidates instead of my own experience so i'll take you through few points uh, during this uh, session and at the end at the end of the session we'll take question and answer so please feel free to jot down any question you have about the presentation about anything i discussed today so i would like to quickly introduce myself uh, i am uh, hashim ali malik uh, i was born and brought up in uh, india uh, bombay dongri uh, in uh, and then i moved to england for my higher studies i have been living in coventry for almost now 16 years Uh, from a educational uh, background, uh, I have done an automotive engineering from Sabu Siddi College uh, in Mumbai. Then I moved to University of Bradford for my MSc in Automotive Engineering Quality Improvement. From a pro professional front, I have worked in Jaguar Land Rover for around 12 years uh, in different departments, different functions, uh, starting with base engine design, body engineering, and ultimately when I left JLR, I was the program quality manager for Range Rover, Range Rover Sport, and Discovery. vehicle lines now currently for the last almost two and a half years i'm the head of quality in draxelmeyer uk it's a premium tier 1 supplier for pretty much all the german and uh, the premium oems uh, including jaguar land rover so i'm currently based in the uk but have uh, lots of travel between uk and germany as our headquarters is in germany so that's about me the reason why you guys are here is about uh, Sure, I'm sharing this uh, what do you say experience with you. So I'll start with the preparation before the interview. So again, if you are selected for an interview, I think you have won half the battle because nobody will call you for an interview if they have not liked your CV. So I think that's a good start that you have been invited for an interview. So take that as a positive. And now the responsibility is on you to go out there and perform. So before you go onto the day of judgment, which is the interview day, I would say. just prepare a few things uh, i'll start with uh, some homework read about the company you know what do they do what are their product offerings services you know what is their future strategy or financials of the last year you know most of them are pretty much available on their website if not then there are lots of uh, job websites like uh, nokri.com uh, glassdoor indeed etc which can be surely helpful for you to go and read about the company so please do that read more about the company and specifically for your particular role or the area where you have applied the job for for example if you apply in quality read about the quality front what do they do in terms of quality iatf six sigma etc etc you know do read about it then have a clear understanding of the job description this is one of the key things which people miss they just apply for the job and luckily they are called for an interview and they don't know what job they are they applying for you know so on the day of the interview i think most of them make this mistake uh, by not reading their job description you know so please read the job advert or job description whatever you receive when you apply the job because that will also help you to kind of raise some questions uh, at the end of your interview session which i'll come to in a minute because i have a slide on that um, later on i'll explain you more in detail so it's important that you read the job description then prepare diverse range of answers uh, what i mean by that is approximately 12 i'm saying because normally an interview last for anywhere between 40 to 50 minutes and you anticipate at least 6 to 8 questions in that time period but to be on a safer side prepare at least 12 uh, examples uh, not necessarily only technical bits that uh, is more relevant to your technical background but you can think about something like a voluntary work you have done you know a charity work you did you know or sports for that matter try to be as diverse as possible because that kind of lights up the interview you know so it really gives you an edge uh, practice your interview technique so whatever you prepare practice because that's the most important thing don't just go thinking that oh on the day i'll just perform no please practice that's important prepare questions about the role or the organization so if you read about the company 
and the job description, surely you will have lots of questions in your mind, you know? So make a note of it and do ask them at the end of your interview. Then obtain surrogate information about salary. So this is a very tricky one because uh, sometimes in the interview itself, the interviewer may ask you saying, what is your salary expectations? So another mistake which people might make is just give a random number, you know, higher or lower. Don't do that. That's uh, I think unnecessary. You can avoid that easily by doing some research. And again, to obtain the surrogate information, you can ask your colleagues, your friends, or internet again, you know, because some of the jobs of similar kind of jobs uh, do have a salary written on it. And surely with your experience, uh, how much experience do you have? What is your academic qualification? You can easily gauge which band you sit in. So do prepare this, uh, basically give, have this handy so that in case if you ask for a number or a range, you are able to provide it at the same time, you're able to provide the justification, the rationale, why you think you deserve that much of salary. It's important. Don't just come up with some random numbers during the interview. You won't do justice to yourself if you do that. Then lastly, take some hard copies of your CV, job advert or any relevant documents. Uh, it's important because sometimes what happens is uh, there are so many interview uh, interviews on, on a particular day, if there's an assessment center and uh, the interviewer may ask like, oh, where's your CV? Do you can I have a copy, you know? So in that case, it's always good to have that handy, you know? So do take a couple of hard copies if possible. Then on the day of interview, so on the day, I would say prepare your journey, you know, upfront. Don't be like, for example, if you're going for a visa delivery boy or, or girl kind of a job, yeah? And if you're late by 30 minutes, you know the repercussions of it, yeah? So please don't be like, plan your journey ahead of time and reach the venue on time, yeah? Dress appropriately, you know, informals, depending on what role you're going in for, yeah? dress appropriately, take a crib sheet, like uh, some sort of a paper sheet and pen or paper, some, you know, so that at least if you want to make some notes, you have something handy. You're not reliant on something, somebody else. Bring in any evidence of any project work you have done. What I mean by that is uh, any one of a presentation or a one single one pager you can come on a kind of come up with to show an example, you know, while uh, during the interview, if you have asked a question, but do remember the confidentiality. So if you're working in a company A and you're going for an interview in a company B, do not take the confidential information of your current company in the interview, because that can be a negative because you, that shows uh, first thing, it will be violation of your current contract. Second thing would be, you are not reliable in a way because people cannot trust you with the confidential data. So be mindful of that try to sanitize the data and make it as generic as possible, but which still tell the story, but doesn't give away everything. And surely a friendly and a professional greeting, you know, with a smile on your face. Yeah, that's important because that's set the scene up. So that's basically, I would say the preparation side of things, uh, you know, of what you need to do upfront and on the day of interview. So interviews, so interviews is all about storytelling, you know, because if the interview normally, which lasts around 40 to 50 minutes, the questions would be for like 10 minutes and predominantly you will be speaking anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. Because so it's important that you know your storytelling, you know, it's an art. It comes with again, practice. So you, you need to practice your answers, you know? So I would say it is about, is, is, it is like the secret games, uh, I would say, you know, because, um, in Secret Games, the key thing was, uh, this is, I believe some of you would have seen Secret Games uh, on Netflix. It's the series uh, very popular on Netflix. And if you see the important thing in that, uh, in the Secret Games, apart from the performance of people, it was a story narration. The protagonist has diverse range of personalities. Yeah. And the way basically he narrates the story and hook up Sartaj, yeah, you can say in this scenario, you are basically the Ganesh Gaitonde of your interview and your interviewer is the Sartaj. So you should lead the interviewer, you know, you should be talking in a way or sharing your story in a way it is engaging. Yeah. So it's important uh, that you are a good storyteller in your interview. Enjoy your interview in that way. Do not take too much pressure and do not show nervousness. Otherwise, you won't be able to be a good storyteller. You won't be able to narrate your story. So it's important you prepare and you narrate the story 
in, in a professional way, obviously. Moving on, uh, so in your storytelling, there are three key attributes, I would say, and these three key attributes are uh, quality, cost, and time. So they will never leave you in your professional career, you know, not only in your interview, anything you do in your corporate life or professional life will be always about quality, cost, and time. What I mean by that is uh, give your answers or responses relevant to these three key factors or attributes. For example, if you just say, I improve the quality of a product, okay? Make it more tangible, make it more factual by saying, I improve the scrap rate. Or oh, basically I reduce the scrap rate by 90%. Yeah, which was costing the company 1 million pounds of worth. Yeah, and we delivered this project six weeks before the job one date or the, we reduce the lead time of the project. So be very tangible, you know, when you are answering the question, don't make it very generic in a way saying, I improve the quality, I reduce the cost, how much reduction, how much improvement you made. So always remember, try to incorporate the e either one of them, you know, or all, all, all three of them, you know, in your res responses, it's important you do that. Otherwise, uh, it may, you will make yourself uh, very generic in your answers, you know, and if you do that, the repercussions are the interviewer will start probing more. And once he or she starts probing you more in detail, that's something which won't uh, be nice because you're not giving away the answer in one go. So be mindful of that. So when you prepare your question, answers for any questions, try to keep these three factors in mind, quality, cost and time. And to be a good storyteller, you need a framework or an approach. And star approach is quite popular in uh, interviews, to be honest. Uh, what it means is situation, task, action, and result. So basically, the situation is you have asked a question first, okay? Tell me about the time when you did something X, Y, and Z, yeah? So you will start with setting the scene up, saying, when I was in so and so role, that was the issue. So describe the scene, you know, what was the issue? Yeah. And then describe the challenges as a task, you know, describe the purpose and the challenges you had during that um, period. Yeah. And then explain what action did you took. Okay. And how you did it. It's important because sometimes uh, one of the mistakes or errors people make is they just keep talking uh, about what they did, but they don't explain how they did it because the, how they did it is extremely important because that shows your softer skill, yeah? Which I'll come to in a minute in one of the slides uh, in the behavior side of the interview. That's extremely vital. You need to explain how you did it, you know, in the right way. Then ultimately the results, what was the outcome? You know, I saved X amount of money, improved the quality X, Y, and Z, yeah? And any recommendations from that, which you kind of gave it to your next project manager or the next project and any lessons learned as well, which you can feed into your processes or projects, etc. So that is basically more on the preparation side of the role uh, where uh, you will be asked, uh, you know, you can prepare it, okay? But when the interview kicks off, uh, I would say, the first question, irrespective of which role you go, whether it's engineering or something to do with finance, quality, etc. The first question will be surely about, tell me about yourself and what is the motivation for the role, okay? So basically tell about why you, we should hire you, okay? It's a very simple question, but I think I would say, I will give an analogy of uh, cricket. You know, in cricket, you have this power play at the beginning of the innings, yeah? This is your power play question. This is something you can prepare for upfront because everybody will ask you this question, you know? So make sure, you take into account what you will be saying, yeah? But also how what you say fits into your long and short-term planning. If you want a particular role, how that fits in your long-term planning of your personal development and obviously what the company will get out of you as well. So this is a very simple question and I would say take the maximum advantage of this because this is your chance to kind of uh, rise and shine. You know, this will set the scene up for the whole of the interview. So if you give more convincing, more pragmatic response, that will be a good start for your interview. I would say the interview will be less painful, you know? So please prepare for this uh, motivation for the role or why 
a person should hire you? You know, what is the reason? There are hundreds of them, you know, which they shortlisted and then there are shortlisted five people and out of those five, you are the one. So why are you out of the rest of the, four, the remaining four? So it's important that you prepare in line with your own, uh, what you say, experience or background. So that will be the first question. The second half could be about technical interview. What I mean by that is uh, normally the technical interviews will be about project management, any certification relevant to your field. If you are in IT field, there are lots of Cisco, et cetera, you know, certification. They will ask you some technical questions on that. Or if you are in automotive engineering, it will be dependent on which part of or, uh, the vehicle you're going in, like engines, they will ask you more questions related to powertrain. If it is in uh, electrical, more on the electrification side, et cetera. Then uh, anything about problem solving, tell me about a time where there was a problem and how you resolve the problem, you know, for this problem solving, you can talk about the uh, PDCA cycle, which is plan, do, check, act, you know, which is uh, by the quality guru, Edward Deming, you can use that framework to answer that. And anything um, then moving on to the specialization, which is more relevant to your field on um, how basically you do certain things. It's more like a subject uh, subject matter expert kind of a questionnaire. Yeah. So again, this will all vary depending on what is your background. Okay. Then something more relevant to your degree. Yeah. If you have a degree in bioelectronics or something, yeah. Then the questions will be in those uh, basically shape and form. Then IT skills, which is again, a, uh, I would say IT skill will pretty much come in every field these days uh, because everybody uses a computer or a laptop or something. Yeah and be interfaced with lots of Excel files and PowerPoint presentations. So these are, I would say, the technical interview themes, you know, which you, which you should prepare, but there will be something more over and above uh, these six categories for sure, depending on which uh, field you are coming from, you know? So it's important you prepare accordingly. And obviously most of the answers is in the job description, I would say. So read the job description because that will also tell you what sort of questions you can expect from the technical interview perspective, because uh, part of the job description do tells us about uh, your responsibility if, if you're successful. So do prepare your answers in line with your job description as well, you know, because that gives you an edge. Then you will be speaking the same language as the interviewer. Yeah. So try to use the same terminologies or words which are in the job description or the job advert. Yeah because that gives you an edge, you know, because you're bringing the other person on a common platform. So remember, these are minor things, but that they are really important because as human psychic, I mean, you know, if you hear the same thing, what you're hiding for or you're looking for, it's easy to correlate. Yeah. So that's the technical interview. And uh, the other half of the interview could be behavior interview. This is softer skills. This is a bit challenging one, I would say. Because preparing for a technical interview, it's easy because you have done your degree or your academic qualification, et cetera, in line with the technical role. But behavior interview can be challenging because that is about your personality, what you are as a person, you know, which you can surely improve by working on different aspects. I've written, I've basically mentioned uh, like some key aspect uh, on behavior interview, like communication, networking, agility and flexibility, teamwork, leadership, building relationship. What I mean by them is basically there would be a question saying, uh, tell me about a time where you have to influence a senior manager, you know, and how you did it. So again, rewind to the star approach. Uh, you will set the scene up saying there was an issue with this particular software and the customer was complaining and they were unable to run the payroll. So, and it was escalated to our senior leadership. So that's the setting the scene, you know, which, which is the first step in the dance of the star approach. Yeah. Then the task was to resolve this issue within like three hours or whatever it was. Yeah. Again, tangible three hours, two hours. And I only had two people at that day because it was Christmas Eve or whatever. So again, add these values, you know, to make it more tangible and it kind of quantifies how big the problem was and what a great job you have done, you know, by resolving that issue. Yeah. So it's important to kind of, put some more emphasis in these kind of small things, you know, because uh, everybody will come and say the same thing in a way, because the, the questions are the same. Tell me about a time on so-and-so, but the person who will stand out, who are, who's keeping uh, a close eye on these nitty gritty, 
or these small things, you know, which will make him or her stand out of the rest. So do ensure you have these things, you know, in your responses. Then talking about then uh, teamwork. Okay. So between teamwork and leadership, don't get confused. Sometimes uh, these questions could be tricky, you know, so do listen to what the question is, because if the question is about teamwork, okay, and you're talking all about yourself, I think you're missing the point here. It is about teamwork, not your show off. Yeah. So be mindful of uh, these things. We have active listening. You know, please listen to the question. If you do not understand the question in one go, very politely ask the interviewer, can you please repeat that for me? You know, and I'm sure they will repeat it for you. But please listen to the question. Take your time to process that information. Take a couple of seconds to process that information in your head and then answer. Don't be like a parrot as soon as you hear something which you think you have a good answer for and you start like a machine. Don't do that. Try to create that pause. It's important. And that is part of your communication. Take that small pause, you know, so that people, people assume that, oh, you're thinking now. Okay. So give that pause because that will help you as well to kind of frame the right answer in the right shape and form to the other person on the other side. So be mindful of these small things because uh, surely if it's a managerial role, they will ask about the re leadership, you know, so it is a balance between I and we. So if it is a question about teamwork, you will surely talk about the team, how great the team performed. But the important thing here you need to highlight is what was your role? Okay. So you need to add a sentence somewhere that I led this team of five people, six people to resolve a particular issue. Yeah. So you have to strike the balance between I and we, not only between the teamwork and leadership questions, but any other behavior interview questions because sometimes another mistake i've seen a uh, candidate makes is uh, they keep talking about we did it we did it we did it okay and then i have to stop them and ask what did you do i'm still struggling to find out figure out what was your role in all of this uh, okay and then i think some some people click very quickly yeah and they kind of then explain oh my role was i was a project engineer i was a project lead i was X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So it's important, um, you know, you explain what was your role, what you did and what the team gained out of it. Yeah. So remember, these are minor bits and, uh, but they are vital. They are very important. I would say then uh, talking about networking, especially in a big company, you know, not everybody knows everything. Okay. You are dependent on your colleagues on, on the departments to make things happen, especially in an automotive company. It's very complex. You know, because we are sometimes you're relying on our purchase colleague to get the supplier on board. Then we are dependent on our logistic colleague to get the material movement done. We are dependent on the engineering colleagues to design the part, you know. So it's a lengthy process and it's a bit complex. You need to have networking skills, you know, and you need to also show what was your role in this whole of this complex network. Yeah, to make things happen. Because networking do come hand in hand with building relationship. You can only have networking if you build quite a good relationship across your big organization, you know, especially in multinationals, you know, and global brand. So it's important you focus on these two uh, behavior as well. Agility and flexibility, you know, there's a lot of focus these days on uh, being agile, you know, in the way we operate not only from a personal perspective, but in process improvements in uh, delivery of projects. Uh, and there are lots of methodology, which has uh, over the period of like 10 to 15 years has been developed uh, on the same uh, framework, you know? So be mindful of this as well. So these are some, uh, what would, I would I'll say is a softer skill interview. They can be a bit challenging because uh, this is something which is your personality. So first thing is you need to understand what kind of personality you are, you know? And if you think, uh, because you have to do your own self-assessment because nobody knows better than yourself, who are you? Yeah. So it's important you do that self-assessment and prepare in the right way. Okay. Moving on. Sometimes uh, oh, there can be some tricky questions. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, just imagine uh, I, I in the storytelling slide, I spoke about the sacred games where I said uh, that you are the protagonist of this interview. You are the one who will set the scene. You are the narrator of your story. Yeah. 
But just imagine instead of Sartaj taking your interview, if that um, Guruji or Trivedi takes your interview, will be a bit tricky because that character, those two characters always spoke in riddles. Yeah. And they never said anything in a straightforward way. They always had this complex way of communication or talking. Yeah. So sometimes you may face a Trivedi or a Guruji in your interview. Yeah. And he or she may ask you tricky questions, not just to stitch you up, but just to see how you behave. What is your body language when a tricky question is asked? You know, so again, keep your composure, listen, what is the question? Some of the question I've jotted down here uh, is uh, like, tell me a story. Yeah, an interviewer can turn around and say, okay, Hashim Ali Malik, can you just tell me a story? Okay, I have not prepared for this, you know, and this is nothing more relevant because I'm an engineer, how I can tell you a story? I mean, I'm not a writer or something, you know, or in the behavior perspective, I mean, where does it sit? It doesn't sit in leadership. <laughs> Okay, it can sit into communication, but telling a story, <laughs> I don't know what, what he really wants or she wants. So in this circumstances, you can basically ask the question, the question back asking, do you want me to tell you a story of a movie which I saw recently or a book which I read like last week or recently? Again, very politically or diplomatically, you have thrown the ball back into the interviewer's court. And then surely the interviewer will take it in the chin and say, oh, tell me a story of the movie you saw, you know, or something else, you know. But again, this is a tricky question. You need to think of the response. Don't start telling a story of a movie, you know, saying, oh, I'll tell you a story of the movie I saw. Think and then respond back. Okay, it's important. Then it can be about, oh, tell me about a time when you made a mistake. Okay, so people are very, because as human beings, we have the psyche, we kind of ignore our own mistakes, you know, I can I make mistakes, you know, but uh, it, this question is about acknowledging that yes, you identified your mistake, realization, you realize that you made what you did was wrong or made an error. Yeah. Key thing here the interviewer is looking for is, uh, again, not to see how stupid you are. It's about realization and what you did with that. So after the event, when you realize that you have made an error or a mistake, yeah, then what did you do? What was your plan, conformance plan, you know, to get over it, okay? So again, this is a very good question. Normally I've seen in many interviews, people do ask this in a very different way, you know, tell me about a time when there was a pressure on the team and there was an error made by one of your colleague and but as you are the project lead, how did you basically overcome this situation? Yeah, but it is eluding you to, you made a mistake and what did you do? So do acknowledge the mistake, do talk, talk about uh, what did you do using the STAR framework, yeah? And at the end, do talk about what did you learn from this mistake? That's the most important thing. Making mistake is okay because we're all human, it's okay to make mistake once, yeah? But the important thing is not to repeat it again. So you need to talk about what did you learn from this, yeah? So that uh, it will never happen again. Prevent recurrence action, you know? So how you will prevent this in future? Okay, so this can be a tricky question uh, as well. The other one would be, if you are an animal, which animal you want to be? <laughs> okay, great. You know, some people might say, I'm not an animal lover, you know, so I don't know. You know, don't make your face go blank. You know, you can say, oh, I would like to be an eagle. So the next question from the interview you can expect is, uh, why eagle? Then you need to describe the characteristics of that particular animal yeah, eagle, yeah, or bird, whatever, yeah, how that is correlatable to your own personality, yeah, I have, like, you know, attention to detail, I wait for the right moment, etc, etc, you know, so you should be, again, sound more convincing, yeah, so, again, this is a tricky question, and there can be anything, you know, depending on who is the interviewer can ask you any question. The other question could be, if wheel was not invented, how would transportation look like? I don't know. I mean, maybe we just travel with ships. Uh, at the moment, nobody's traveling that much, <laughs> especially in this pandemic. But just imagine if there is nothing, there is no wheels, how do we do transportation? I mean, you know, hovercrafts or I don't know, just only ships. You never know what can be the question. But again, keep your calm, give yourself time, you know. Think about it, okay? The other one could be, 
In fact, this question was asked uh, to me in one of the leadership role I went for. The interviewer all of a sudden turned around and asked me, okay, Ashim, if I'm in the pub uh, with your friends, uh, how will your friends describe your three positive and three negative characteristics? And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I gave him the three characteristics. And the next question was, which I anticipated after that was, why you think they will say that? <laughs> and what are you doing to improve your negative characteristic? So... Again, a part of this uh, behavior interview and the technical interview, these kind of tricky questions can come from anywhere. But again, keep your composure, listen to the question and answer it in the appropriate way. You know, and if you do not understand the question in one go, stop and ask very politely, can you please explain, can you please ask the question again? You know? Or if you don't have the answer at all, if it is so confusing or so challenging that you can't think of an answer, be honest and raise your hand and say, sorry, can we come back to this question at the end of the interview? You know, so that they kind of continue the, uh, the interview session. Yeah, and then come back to the question. And if the interviewer has forgotten about this, in case, then do talk about, um, do ask him that, can we ask that question again? So park the question, come back to it later so that it gives you more time. But do not be kind of come up with some random answers, which is completely out of uh, the blue, yeah? So those are the tricky questions which you may anticipate between uh, the technical and the behavior interview. Hindsight, always anticipate this. Irrespective of which interview you are in, in the technical or behavior, any response you give, prepare, hindsight what will you do differently if you have you are in the same situation again so please always have this in the back of your mind because you can be asked this question anytime in hindsight what you would do differently you know so the easy answer could be oh i can't do anything you know but that's basically you're just dropping your shoulder saying yeah what i did was the best and all that but again the reason the the interviewer is asking you this question is purely because wants to understand do you recognize any further improvement which you learned from the previous project delivery or anything you delivered in the past so prepare an answer for all the responses you have made in hindsight what you would do differently it's important it's really important the next one is in the interview you have a lifeline and it depends on you whether you use it and how you use it what i mean by that is uh, a glass of water or a bottle of water. What I mean by that is uh, basically do carry a water bottle, obviously, because you need to be hydrated before you get into the interview. You know, the last thing you want that you are not feeling right in the interview. So please uh, keep yourself hydrated uh, during the interview. But the reason I say the, that glass of water is your lifeline, because uh, as we were talking about the tricky questions, the other way to deal with the tricky question is uh, taking a glass of water. So when you listen to the question and you think this is something you're not prepared for, yeah, and your mind needs some more seconds to think about a response, move your hands toward that glass of water. That is buying you a few more seconds and your brain will surely give you an answer, yeah, to that particular tricky question or that challenging question. But do it in a way it doesn't look like a nervousness that you're feeling nervous and, oh God, what are you doing? Do it in a way that nod, yeah, that you're listening, yeah, nod your head, move towards the glass, you know, with a smile and drink water and say, oh, that, appreciate the question. Oh, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, and then start. But what your mind is doing in the background, though you've got five, six extra seconds, yeah, to take that one sip of water, yeah, what, what your brain did in the five, six seconds would have given you the answer to get out of this uh, tricky question or the challenging question. So use that as a lifeline, I would say, you know, because... Um, and make it look genuine, you know, don't, and, but at the same time, don't overuse it. That every question is asked, your hand is going towards the, the glass of water, which tells the interviewer that you're nervous, you're not confident enough, you know, so be confident, you know, do it in a way that you're doing it as normal, you know, just behave normal. That's more important than anything else, because that's what especially our HR colleagues looks for, you know, because they are not the technical expert in some engineering or software, etc they are technical expert in judging people, their personality, their body language, their tonality. They read that, you know, when people feel afraid or nervous or they don't know what they're saying, you know, so make it look genuine. 
and use this as a lifeline, I would say. It works, you know, but try it. Again, practice it. Don't make it obvious that you're stuck with this question and you just want to drink water, yeah? So that's your lifeline. One part of the interview could be group discussions. You know, apart from the normal one-to-one -one interviews, you may be asked to join a group of other candidates, especially it happens in the assessment centers uh, where they get six, seven candidates, put them in a room, they give a particular situation or a scenario and describe the problem and give each and every person in this uh, particular group discussion a role to play. It's a role play basically. So just imagine, so what you need to do in here in the group discussion, just imagine you are Mr. Pink, yeah? What I would suggest you do is, if, the, if it is a circular table, draw a circle on the piece of paper you have, which you have carrying here, and write down the names of people sitting next to you. Yeah, if Mr. Dark Blue, Light Blue, Dark Green, Light Green, like that. The reason I say that is because when people are formally introducing themselves, who they are and what is their role, yeah, if there are six, seven people, surely you're meeting them first time and you will forget the name, okay? It will look very awkward and not right when you start pointing fingers at, oh, what is your name? Oh, tell me what was you saying, you know? So it's important you draw quickly the table, depending if it's a circular table, draw a circle. If it's a rectangular table, draw a rectangle and write down the name of people in that order. So you don't have to remember who is who, yeah? Because you will know the third person on my right-hand side is so-and-so, yeah? It's, it's makes basically your life easier to communicate with them during the group discussion. And also in some circumstances, the HR do ask you to leave your notes, which you have made during the group discussion on the table and leave the room without taking any paperwork. What they do after that is basically look at the sheet of paper you have been writing or scribbling on and see what was your thought process during this 40 minutes or an hour group discussion. So the first thing you do is write down the names, you know, formally introduce, you know, uh, each other and then write down the names of people. Few key points which you need to be aware of or should take into consideration is always take the lead. Grab any opportunity comes your way, you know, take the lead. For example, if there is a flip chart and somebody needs to write on it, get up, take the marker pen and say, okay, I'll take the lead in writing this. Yeah. Always show that, but do not overrun others, you know, respect, be respectful. Active listening is a key thing in group discussion because mind you, this is a, a superficial situation. Yeah. So what again, HR is looking for is what is your behavior? How do you respond in this scenario in terms of uh, your other colleagues, you know, are you respectful towards them? Are you just cutting them off? Are you very aggressive in your nature? So all this comes in play. So be an active listener, because that's the key element in the whole of interview, irrespective of which uh, phase it is, whether it's personal interview, the, sorry, the uh, technical interview, behavior interview or group discussion, active listening is the key thing. Be receptive to others. You know, when if somebody is talking about a particular point, listen and be receptive, you know, that acknowledge it by a nod or a smile, you know, by your body language, do a gesture. You know, it's difficult sometimes. I mean, in this, uh, what do you say, way of, uh, what do you say, the webinar to explain it. But on a personal level, if I'm, I can show you the body gestures, like in nodding, you know, and you say, yeah, I appreciate, I like that point, you know. Then uh, be relevant, talk to the subject, do not bring anything which is outside of the topic, you know, be factual again, yeah, and talk to the point. Do not talk anything else apart from the group discussion yet yeah, topic. Appreciate others viewpoint, as I said earlier, don't be aggressive. Don't cut off people, you know, at all. Don't do this kind of body language saying, no, no, I disagree. Don't do that. That is basically you're cutting off people saying, no, you stop. That's not a good behavior. And the next, the last point, and the most important one is use of appropriate body language. You know, don't be so sloppy that, oh, your shoulders are down and you're down and out and you're not, you're looking least interested. At the same time, don't be too loud as well, you know, find the right balance, you know, don't be aggressive. So these are the few points you need to take into consideration. And again, you can only prepare by the topics you have. Given. Sometimes the group discussion topic is given in advance. Sometimes they just want to check the person or the candidates and they give you on the day. So, but the points which I've mentioned is applicable in both scenarios, you know. These are the generic points which you need to take into account when you are in a group discussion. There is no right or wrong answers. Yeah, it's all about your behavior. You know, how you were receptive or how you kind of coordinated the topic with the other colleagues. Okay. 
So points to remember during an interview, you know, your formal greeting, handshake, smile. Yeah, it's important. And I always say smile is contagious, you know, have a brief smile, you know, always not smile, you know, but don't start laughing. I mean, you know, again, strike that right balance, you know, body language is extremely important and vital. If somebody comes in with the drop shoulder and thinking, oh shit, why I'm here, I think you have lost the battle. You don't need to even stay there for an hour. You know, so it's important, the correct use of body language. But again, this comes with practice. These days you can do practice, maybe using your mobile phone. You know, you can record yourself while you're answering and see what mistakes you're making. You know, you can see how your eyes were moving, you know, and so on and so forth. There are lots of things you can do these days using the technologies we have around us, you know. Use your mobile phone, record yourself for a, or a particular question or an answer, yeah, and see what mistakes or errors you are making and how you can improvise it. Ask for help, ask your colleague, ask your friend, you know. It's no harm asking other people's opinion, you know, because they can surely tell you where you're going wrong. It's all about taking that uh, positive criticism, you know, and use it in, in a constructive way. Tonality, it's important because uh, that is also a very important aspect of the interview, you know. How was your tone? If you are someone over the top, just shouting or very loud, the interviewer will lose interest. At the same time, if you are sounding very miserable and you know, I don't know what, like very low, then again, the impression you will create will be like, uh, you're not fit for the role because you have to drive people, especially if you, it's a management role or something, or a graduate role for that matter, because uh, what we look for the young graduates is their passion, you know, enthusiasm. And if you're sounding too low, you'll be like, where's the passion? Where's the enthusiasm to do the right thing, you know? and to move forward and take the lead, take every opportunity coming in your way. So your tonality is important. Active listening, as I said a couple of times already, active listening is the key. Listen to the question. Listen to what the interviewer is saying and asking for. If you do not understand in one go, stop and say, can you please repeat the question for me? It's no harm in doing that. Instead of giving a wrong answer, it's always better to acknowledge that you, you need to know once more time, yeah? Balance between I and we is extremely important as well, because uh, as I said earlier, especially if it's a leadership question, it is more about the I, yeah? By taking into consideration the we aspect, how you drove the team, how you led the team to achieve a particular goal, yeah? So it's important you remember these few points in terms of during the interview. Uh, this is an important one, you know, when you ask, say, motivation for the role, why you want to join us, you know, why you think we should select you today, you should have this, uh, I would say it's important, it's, it's good to have this plan handy, plan for the 100 days. What it, what it means is, it shows that you are the man or the woman with the plan, what you will do if you're successful in this job, what you will do on day one. Okay, you will come meet and greet your first line manager. You will meet your team, current team. In the first week, you will meet all the other stakeholders. In the first month, you will agree the goals, etc. Yeah. In the second month, what you will do, you will come up with some task force. Third month, you will start the delivery. And by the 100 days, you expect X, Y, and Z in terms of your achievement. You know what you agreed in your week one or month one. So it's always important you jot down a plan. Yeah on how you will approach this role, because this will be a delighter for the interviewer. If you, again, if you take this 100 day plan that if I'm successful, I would like to do this. Yeah, and most of this answer will be in the job description or the job advert. So read, please read it. You know, you just need to tailor this 100 days plan in line with that, you know. So always, uh, I would say, I personally carry it, my 100 days plan, you know because this is what I will do if I take a new leadership role somewhere or any role I do, you know, because that kind of gives the reassurance to the interviewer that this guy or this person is not only thinking of the interview, he's already planning ahead. You know, it's all about anticipation, you know, because before the interviewer asks you, you should be able to kind of uh, anticipate it and give him what he wants or she wants, depending who's taking your interview. So that's the plan for 100 days. So think about it. It's not mandatory, but it's good to have. Again, this will give you an edge, I would say, over the others because the others would be coming blank as well. Yeah, if you have something like this, more concrete, that you have thought about it already, it will give some positive impression to the interviewer. 
the most important feature of an interview or the most important aspect in you during the whole of interview, you know, not just your interview, even in your professional career or even in your life is integrity in my view. If that is lost, you, have, you are nothing, you lost it. And it can only take one silly mistake of yours during the interview or during your professional career to do that. Yeah. So always keep your integrity during the interview and even after the interview when you're successful. Yeah. Because it's important, your honesty and integrity are the key pillars because that again shows what kind of person you are. So always keep your integrity. It's vital. This is my favorite side, I would say, of this uh, whole presentation because it has two images of two, I would say, different decades. And uh, so on the right, you see a semi-final game between India and uh, Pakistan in Bengaluru, 1996 quarterfinals. And on the left, you see Mahindra Singh Dhoni in the, in the finals of uh, 2011 World Cup. These two pictures tells you the story, two different story. Because if you see on the right-hand side picture, at one stage, uh, if you see the score, yeah, Pakistan was cruising, okay? And myself, as a 12-year-old or 13-year-old at that time, I was like, my God, it seems like we will lose, okay? But something happened. Yeah, Amin Sohel, the batsman, scored a boundary and became a bit overconfident, yeah? And what happened next is in the third picture, which you see, he was bold, the next ball itself. So here, there was one person who was overconfident about it, and the other person, which was the bowler, Prasad, kept to its basic. You know, he did exactly what he practiced. So what I'm trying to say is, don't be overconfident at any point in time in your interview. Yeah, don't lose your wicket. Just keep to your basic, you know. Be brilliant at basic. Do what you have learned until now. Do not go and try something new. Yeah, and expecting some wonders will happen. Yeah, keep to your basic. But on the left-hand side, Mahindra Singh Dhoni also showed a leadership by taking, uh, going up the order and he was confident that he can, you know, play a good knock and get the World Cup for India. So that was his confidence, you know, and he has done it multiple times in his career for India, playing for India and other leagues which he has played. So what I'm saying is during the interview, never be overconfident. If you have given a couple of good examples, yeah, doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're getting the job because this is the mistake you will make, okay? So never be overconfident, even when you're out of the building, getting into your car. Yeah. Finish it off, go home and then think about it, where you went right or where you went wrong. And do not show your overconfidence that, oh, I've given a few good examples. The job is in my pocket. No, never do that. So what I'm trying to say is don't get complacent at any point in time in your interview. Never. And always look and monitor the situation continuously. What's happening if there are a couple of people taking your interview, for example, your line manager, or the recruiting manager and the HR personnel, look at their body language. What are they doing? You know, are they giving any obvious signals? When I say signals, it's like looking at the watch, like a confused look. You set an exam, you gave a response and they're looking confused and they don't understand what exactly you said, yeah? Or they're rushing through the questions, you know? If they're rushing through the questions, which means they just want to finish off the interview, to be honest, yeah? So. Constantly monitor the situation. Do not get complacent at any point in time. Yeah. And look out for obvious signals because it's important. End of the interview, you will surely get an opportunity to ask any question and answer. And this is your chance. You know, this is your second power play. You know, you had the first power play as some motivation for the role. Yeah. Which you can prepare up front and set the scene up for the interview. This is the, your second batting power play where basically Oh, sorry, bowling power play, if I'm getting it right now. Where the questions you have prepared by reading about the company and the role, you need to ask them relevant questions. Just don't ask questions for the sake of asking some stupid question. Never do that. Be very precise, yeah, and be very clear what is the question and why you're asking it. Do ask for an interview feedback. It's important, you know, always uh, ask that. You know, that's a given, I would say. Ask about when you will be informed about the outcome, you know, and ask any other level of interviews because uh, sometimes the interviews can go on for three, four levels, uh, you know, at different, depending on what job you're going in for. So these are the generic questions you can easily ask the last three, especially the interview feedback, the outcome of the interview and the next level of interview by default. But the key thing for you is when you do your homework about the job description and the company, 
you can easily pinpoint what is a specific particular very what is a specific question you need to ask in regard to the role you have applied for yeah because it kind of gives uh, again uh, the impression to the interviewer that you have thought about the role and the organization is not just you want the job because you don't have any other thing to do in your life yeah you've thought about it you have a plan in place yeah and you will be an asset to the business yeah so it's important you take this opportunity to ask the question you know this is my last slide. So if you basically perform well, yeah, you will be successful for sure. You'll be the number one and you will basically get the role and get, get things going and you will think about your future development. But if you are not successful, you will be maybe confused that why you didn't got the job. But in both circumstances, uh, I would say you still have to build your future. If you are successful, then you still have to develop your future that how you can go up the ranking in your current business, yeah? And how you can develop yourself further, okay? And at the same time, if you're unsuccessful, you need to kind of identify from the feedback given to you after the interview, or in fact, you will know where you went wrong, you know? You, how you can improvise that. What have you learned from those errors or mistakes you made during the interview and start again, you know? Because it's okay to fail, but the important, as I said, it's okay to make a mistake, but the important thing is not to repeat it, you know, because we all make mistakes. Humans all make mistakes, you know, because it's important. It's like a game of rugby. I mean, uh, if you see in rugby, basically the, the players run ahead, but they keep passing the ball to the player behind them. And that's how they score the goal. So it may look like, oh, they, what do you say? They're throwing the ball to the player behind them, but ultimately they're moving forward. So it's the same thing in your life. I would say this analogy can be implemented that you are moving ahead in your life. So though you're passing the ball to the player behind you, but you're still going ahead, you know? So learn from the errors you made and start again, because uh, that's the whole thing, because life never stops, you know? So keep thinking of what you can do better, how you could be, could be a better person to begin with, and how you can crack any interviews or anything in your life, you know? And I would uh, finish my presentation with this one quote of Lao Tzu, which says like the journey of thousand miles uh, begins with a single step. You know, so you have to take that first step, you know, nobody else will. If you don't take it, nobody else will. If you don't look after yourself, nobody else will, you know. So forget about that. Oh, somebody will help me by this and that. People can give you some guidance, can give you some advice, your friends, your colleagues, your parents, family, etc. But they're not going to do it for you. It's you who has to take that initiative and the lead to shape up your career, both professionally and personally. So that's the end of the presentation, I would say. Any questions? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Hashim, sir. Uh, we've got a couple of questions which have been raised by the attendees. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you those questions and we'll try to address them. So I've got a first question here. Uh, I'm having stage fear while talking with friends. I talk uh, frankly but when talking in public place and my senior too, I get fear that I'm unable to talk with them. So tell me, how can I overcome this stage fear? Everybody has it, I would say. Some people acknowledge it, that they have this fear. So good thing is, at least you're recognizing that you have this, yeah? I mean, I would say I have something similar because uh, like anything else, if I'm going, say, I'll play cricket, but I go into bat, if I'm in under, the team is under pressure, I also feel the pressure. But once I get going, I'm on the field, it automatically happens. But what you can do, I would say, is uh, stand in front of the mirror, okay, alone. And kind of address it in a way that you will address because you will see your own body language. And as I said earlier, use mobile phone to record your responses and see where you're going wrong. Because uh, when you will see yourself, it will give a different impression. You know what I mean? you will feel like somebody is watching you because that's what the stage fear is all about. You know, where the hundreds of eyes look staring at you. So I would say as a first step, start with your mobile phone or stand in front of the mirror. Yeah. And answer the question and see how, where you went right or wrong. And then take it from there, like ask your family or some, your friend or colleague basically to do the same, do this, uh, what I would say a trial run or a dry run. You know, I did the same yesterday with Esan and uh, another, gen I mean, like, uh, another gentleman yesterday before coming into this session, because uh, no doubt I have to share what I have done uh, with Esan. At the same time, uh, I wanted uh, 
to see whether I'm performing in the right way or not. So start with yourself, use your mobile phone, and then basically take the help of one of your colleagues or friend and family. And I'm sure they will help you. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got another question here. How to overcome from sudden nervousness when you're going through the interview process? You're in between the interview and you're feeling nervous. How to I would say first thing first, if you reach on, first thing is reach on time to the venue, okay? Keep yourself hydrated. That's the hygiene stuff, okay? I would say talk about a subject, like, you know, I mean, especially in England, we always start talking about the weather. <laughs> you know, how's the weather? Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be sunny and everybody's happy, yeah? Oh, it's gonna rain again, you know? So talk about a subject, you know, uh, to the receptionist, to anybody, you know, the, not the, the, the very beginning of the interview, you know, when you're reaching the venue to kind of calm down your nerves because that takes away some of the kind of nervousness because you're talking about a subject which is not relevant to your interview, you know? So it kind of control your nerves in a way or calm down yourself and I drink a glass of water will really helpful, I would say. But again, it comes with time. You know, if you do mock interviews with your family or friend, you know, do it in a way that uh, uh, I would say, I would suggest is uh, the interviewer is sitting in a room and you enter the room, start the interview in that way, how you will enter the room of the interview, you know, what will be your body language, what you will carry. So repeat the same, what you will do in an actual interview, walk through the process and you will see where you're making mistakes, you know, so take help of you again, somebody who can do a mock interview. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's right. So I've got a question from Kameen Patel. How to improve written and verbal communication? I would say it depends on which language you are after. I mean, if you're after English, then surely there are lots of education centers, etc., which can improve or else just talk to people in English, you know? as much as you can. You may not be right, but nobody's perfect. You know, just take it in the chin. If you make an error, just don't repeat it again. Just try to communicate in the language you would like to, you know, improve on. I'm still trying to improve my German, but I'm nowhere near, <laughs> you know. So yeah, just go in that way, I would say. I've got one question uh, from um, Madhulanga Saha. What if I fail to prepare for an interview in advance and to face it? Is there any specific way to handle such unpreparedness? It's, it's sometimes we just get a call from human resources that can you come down for an interview today? I mean, look, if you have applied for a job, you are prepared for an interview. It won't be any human resource will just call you randomly and say, oh, Mr. So-and-so or Ms. So-and-so come for an interview this afternoon. So you are prepared. That's why you have applied for the job. But yes, what you can't do is kind of be relevant to that particular interview thing. In that way, I would say just kind of be, uh, just read what you have submitted in terms of what sort of CV or letter you have, what do you say, submitted for that role, okay? And I would say if there is lack of uh, that, I would say just go with it, you know, but again, keep your integrity. Do not start making things up. If you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer, you know, and do acknowledge uh, in somewhere in the interview that it is the lack of time uh, was given. But to be honest, sometimes deliberately HR does it just to see how people are getting prepared in that short time period. Again, it's part of their role job, I would say, to look at how you behave. The less time they give you, to see how great you do in the interview. So I would say you don't need special three, four extra days. You are prepared the time you apply for a job. Otherwise you won't apply for a job. So that's great. So thank you so much. I have a question from Muhammad Umar. What should I do when I'm stuck in a question by an interviewer and I don't really know the answer to it? As I said earlier in the presentation, park the question and come back again. You know, or if you want to reiterate, if you want him to reiterate the question, just give another try. But do not make things, I mean, like, you know, do not make things up in the interview. That doesn't help. And you will be easily picked up because the person who is taking the interview is far more experienced than you are, I would say. 
Yes. And if you don't know at all, just be honest and say, I'm sorry, I don't know about this particular topic. I'm sure that will be more appreciated than you start bluffing in the interview. At least I will do that. I mean, uh, I will appreciate the person who is honest. Thank you so much. Uh, I have a question from Mohammed Talha. Uh, so could you please just explain in brief about the second point of diverse range of answers? Oh. What I mean by diverse range of answers is that surely everybody prepares from a technical. So if I'm an engineer, it's easy for me to talk about engineering. Yeah, I will talk about, oh, there was an issue with the car and we did this. Oh, there was an issue with this particular aspect of uh, the car and we did this. Yeah, So it's all very technical and relevant to the, what do you say, vehicle, okay, or parts or components of the vehicle. But if I give an example, say, oh, I was parts of, for this particular example, AMP, I got an opportunity to present in the AMP, yeah, and it was, the topic was about um, how to approach an interview. That is completely different to what I do in my day-to-day -day job. Yeah, that's a diverse answer. Similarly, if I talk about what I do in sports, yeah, I'm a, I'm a cricket player and so-and-so, or I'm a volleyball player or a volleyball captain for so-and-so team. That's a completely, again, another aspect of life. Yeah. So that's what I mean by diverse range of answers. You know, if you, because sometimes, especially the youngsters in the graduate, you know, they have not had any professional experience So how they will give technical examples, you know, there's very limited because they have not gone through uh, an, an industry or something. Yeah. In that scenario, it's important for them to use the extracurricular activities, whether it's their festival in the, uh, the cultural festival, uh, organizing them, you know, I organize this cultural festival. I, uh, I was the GS of the college, so on and so forth. So that's a diverse and that's kind of show their behavior skill that they led that particular project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. So I have a next question from Sheikh Basit Hussain. He wants to ask at which moment should we be handshaking with the interviewer? So, I mean, at the beginning, normally, at least in the UK, we do handshake at the beginning, you know, say, hello, how are you? You know, I'm Hashim Malik. That's how I introduce myself. And at the end as well, thank you. I mean, like, you know, just to say, acknowledge that thank you very much for, you know, inviting me for this interview. Speak to you soon. So it's both in the beginning and at the end. But again, it will all depend how many people are taking your interview. If there are a jury of four or five people taking it and they're sitting far away from you, you may not get that chance to kind of hand, go and handshake with everyone. You know what I mean? But if it's a small room, it's only one person or two people taking it, it's easier. So again, you have to gauge that scenario, okay? On when we, you do this handshake, you may not need to do it. It all depends. Sometimes due to cultural... Uh, things as well, you know, uh, people don't handshake, you know. Thank you so much. I have a question from Saad Patel. How to recognize my own capabilities so as to apply for a particular job and search for job in that order? I mean, if it is technical capabilities, yeah, you would know from your, uh, I would say, academic uh, scores, yeah, how capable you are. But I would say it is... Um, all about you discovering your personality. What do you enjoy? Because uh, everybody works for, uh, what do you say, obviously the professional development and the salary and everything, but it's just like, uh, is it the right job? Am I going to enjoy this, you know? So you need to think in that way, not just what is my capability, I don't know myself. Not really, you know. You know exactly which food you like. You know exactly which movies you like. You know exactly which tourist spot you like or which car or bike you drive and etc. So it's no rocket science in understanding what sort of role will be, what you say you will enjoy. It's a matter of sitting down and understanding yourself. Yeah, so give a bit of thought, you know, and you will have the answer. Nobody else can tell you more about yourself. It should be you knowing yourself. Thank you. Uh, I have a next question from Imad Azam. Usually in interviews, in the beginning, they are starting with a common question for all the participants, like tell me something about yourself, or they will ask us to speak about a topic like favorite travel destination, etc. And on this basis, they are just selecting candidates for future rounds. How can we crack that? Well, 
this is the power play thing, you know, which I mentioned. You need to be so punchy and succinct and more relevant to the role you have applied for, you know, so that you stand out. And basically, you can only do that by adding uh, some factual facts and figures into it. Yeah. So if you can't just say, oh, I, I did well in my studies. How well did you do? You know, and also share in anywhere in the, in the, in the question, you need to basically somewhere say about what will be the company gain out of you and your experience and knowledge? You know what I mean? Oh, you need to basically speak the same language. You can speak the same language by looking at what is that company doing? What is your job description saying? So read it. That has most of the answers, which will be helping you to phrase the sentences in the right way. Because the first round, if, if it's only one question they're going to ask you and they're going to select you for the next round on that basis, I would personally look at the job description and read the terminologies they have used and try to encompass those wordings or acronyms in my answer. And I'm sure you are smart enough to do that because you are called for an interview. So you have already gone past the first hurdle of uh, CV filtration. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, next question from Atif Zaidi. Uh, while answering the question, what are your salary expectations? Should a person consider answering a low salary to get a job? It's a good question, but it also depends on what do you want. Sometimes we do certain jobs or tasks in life, which we think, oh, why I'm doing this? I'm just repeating myself. But there's some external circumstances also determine that. For example, during this pandemic, uh, having a job can be a challenge going forward because pretty much the whole global economy is in turmoil at the moment. Yeah. So at the moment, it's survival mode for everyone, you know, in any industry, not just automotive uh, or engineering side of things. But sometimes uh, it's also about, will you enjoy that role on a lower salary? Because salary will come one day or the other. But the key thing is, will you enjoy that? Because if you enjoy that, then surely you will find a way to grow in that organization. But at the same time, I would say, do not put the bar so low that it becomes difficult for the others. Be mindful of that. What I mean by that, if you are, say, the topper of your college or the district, whatever, and if you go and say, I will do this job or role for X amount of money, yeah, and there are 10 vacancies, you will be then the bar for the other people. Okay, so you may progress further because you are smart enough. But at the same time, do not give this leverage to the company, I would say that they start uh, engaging the other people with the same stick. Yeah, because they will give your example and say, look, this gentleman, who is so and so achieved so much is on this salary. So you need to be mindful. And that's what I'm saying, be tactical, read about it. What is the salary for the same role, obtain that surrogate information. And surely it's your personal circumstances which will determine whether you accept the role or not or for that particular salary. But I would say read about it. Don't just give a random number. Thank you so much. Uh, I have a similar kind of a question that we have answered. But the person is asking, is it okay to tell the interview that you can give me a salary depending on my work position? Um, this is if, if an interview if an interview is asking you what are your salary expectation can please say you, you can give me I'm salary sure. as for the position I mean, this is again giving away the bullets to the other person to fire at you to be honest yeah so always be in command as i said you need to be in command of the interview you are the main protagonist of your interview do not let that go at any stage yeah but don't be overconfident yeah in any point in time do not say such open-ended question where the person on the other end might say, oh, I will give you just this much only. This is not a marketplace, yeah? You are a professional, so stick to that. Show your professionalism, I would say. I will never say that. Give me whatever you want me to do and all that because you're giving away your advantage to the other person, simply speaking. So again, prepare. What will be the right answer? Yeah, so you need to prepare. You need to look at some of the data which is around you so in case if you're asked you give a very valid and a genuine response thank you so much uh this is the last question of the day uh, how can i leave an impression of best candidate 
post completion of interview as i leave the interview room i mean you can finish off on a high by obviously the greetings and a handshake and a smile surely smile is contagious always keep that smile on your face you know because then you are more receptive as well i would say you know so always leave that on a high and say take care you know that greeting but when you walk out of the room don't look very disorganized that your pen was flying somewhere your laptop was somewhere else and so on and so forth yeah you created a proper mess in the room never do that yeah so be very organized pick up your stuff do the greeting and walk out the door in the right you know appropriate body language so from cradle to grave from entering the room to getting out of the room you show your professionalism yeah thank you so much uh, hashim sir all the questions we have already answered but the questions which are remaining are the repeated ones so we'll just uh, leave them i now request uh, mr iftikhar benfer sir to please come and conclude the session so we can end it later with a dua jazakallah and thank you hashim hashim sir for Martin. your time and effort and it was a very enriching session i think i could say uh one of the key things which i personally learned about it because i have attended a lot of interviews in my career also and initially when the when there was my first job i got the job in the first interview itself uh, but when the recent job i got it i have to do seven interviews seven level of interviews to get that particular job but as you go about the i would like to say the grade uh, the number of interviews open uh, and 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 on an overall level i am thankful to you for giving such a good session to the candidates here or the people who have participated here and we would like to invite you in future also for more of this uh, uh, sessions and thanks from association of muslim professional for the help, help and connecting with us thank you very much no oh, thank you my pleasure and take care everyone thank you so nice. much uh, thank you uh, mr hashim sir for such an insightful session uh, it was a great learning right from how to prepare before interview till the time we we'll land up getting a desired job shall so i hope that everyone who attended this session will take these learnings and implement it in their professional life and grow in their profession so to all the participants it was fantastic to have you all on board Uh, AMP keep organizing such sessions by highly qualified professionals and experts, so in a particular field to share their learnings and viewpoints to guide not only youths but everyone with their own life experiences. So we request you all to keep coming for such sessions. We'll keep updating you all regarding our upcoming sessions as well. Inshallah, we'll be ending this session with a dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alamin. Ya Jalal Al Walid. يا خير الاخرين يا ذا القوة المتين يا رحيم المساكين يا رحم الراحمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم انك السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالى يا ذا الجلال والكرام ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفينا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل لغة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم يسر لنا امورنا كلها ما روحت في قلوبنا وارضاننا والسلامه والعافيه في ديننا ودنيانا حسبي الله لا اله الا هو وليه وقلبه ورب العرش العظيم سبحان ربي رب العزه يا ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you everyone for joining uh, this is Shaza signing off from here assalamu alaikum Thank you very much um,